क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम ई कीडा Hello friends in the previous topic we have discussed about the preparation of dioxin and in that also we have also got to know about the properties of dioxin as well as uses so now in this topic we are going to talk about the oxides and now let us understand in this topic that what are the classification of oxides so this is what i'm going to talk about in this topic so now let's get started so friends before understanding the topic classification of oxide it is very much essential for us to understand what is actually oxide so for that we have a definition and the definition says that oxygen combines with large number of metals as well as non metals so as to form binary compounds which are called as oxides so what are binary compounds binary compounds are those compounds which consist of at least two elements so in that case suppose we are talking about oxides that means that it will consist of the oxygen as well as a non metal or whether it will also consist of a metal so this is the topic that is based on the classification of oxides so basically the oxides are basically classified into four types and those are acidic oxide basic oxides that is amphoteric oxides and neutral oxides so this is what i'm going to talk about each of it deeply so now let us understand that is how this oxides are been prepared and what are the different classification of it so talking about the first classification of oxide that is i am going to talk about acid oxides so what are acid oxides whenever the oxygen is combined with non metal so therefore the product that is been formed is basically known as acid oxides the reason behind that is is had the reason behind that is that oxide is basically acidic in nature so for that we have a certain example so that i could elaborate this topic very clearly so talking about the first example that is suppose if we are talking about carbon dioxide in this case basically the carbon is obviously we understand that is it is a non metal so therefore this oxide of the carbon suppose if it is combining with water so in this case the product that is been formed that is known as h2co3 which is known as carbonic acid so this is an acid that has been produced because of this oxide so therefore this is an oxide which has eventually given us an acid so that's the reason this co2 is acidic in nature and it is also known as acidic oxide so this was the one of the example and now let me talk about the next example the next example suppose if i talk about that is sulfur dioxide suppose if i'm talking about sulfur dioxide and suppose if sulfur dioxide is treated with water so therefore the product that is what we could get is h2so3 which is known as sulfurous acid so even this is the product that has been formed that is nothing known as acid so that's the reason this so2 that is on hydration that is on reaction with h2 it has formed an acid that's the reason this oxides are basically known as acidic oxides so talking about the next example that is suppose if i consider so3 that is sulfur trioxide and suppose if i'm treating it with water So in this case, the product that is what we could get is H two S O four that is known as sulfuric acid. This is a common example that is what we know, and this is nothing but acidic in nature. So therefore, this S O three is also comes under the category of acidic oxide. And now let me talk about the another example. Suppose if I am talking about that is P four O ten, and suppose if I am reacting it with water that is six moles of H two. So therefore, the product that is what we could get, we could get that is four moles of four moles of H three PO four that is known as phosphoric acid. So again, it is an example of an acid which has produced because of the action of H two on this oxide, making this oxide to be called as acidic oxide. So talking about the another example that we have, that is suppose if we consider that is N two O five, that is nitrogen pentoxide, and suppose if I am reacting it with water. So therefore, the product that has been formed is basically Two moles of HNO three, which is known as nitric acid. So therefore, this all are the acids that are being produced because of the reaction of water with those oxides, and this oxides are basically known as acidic oxides. And now let us move on to the next classification. So the next classification is basic oxide. So what are basic oxide? It is very much similar. That is what we have considered about the acidic oxide. That is, the basic oxides are the oxides which, when reacted with water, it produces base. So those oxides are basically known as basic oxides, and the product that has been formed whenever the basic oxide is treated with water is nothing but it is an alkali or it is basically a base. So this is what I'm going to talk about, and now let us understand few examples related to it. Suppose if I talk about that is calcium oxide, that is CaO. So whenever calcium oxide is treated with water, therefore the product that has been formed 
is CaOH twice, which is known as calcium hydroxide, which is in fact a base. And okay, what the other example that is suppose if I consider that is sodium oxide, that is Na2O, and suppose if we are reacting it with water, so therefore the product that has been formed is that is two moles of NaOH, which is a common base that we know. And okay, what the another one that is suppose if I consider that is the barium oxide. And suppose if we are reacting it with water, so the product that we can get is BaOH twice, which is known as barium hydroxide. So this all are basically basic in nature because of this oxides we can easily get those bases, and hence this oxides are known as basic oxides. So now let us move on to the next classification. So the next classification is amphoteric oxides. So what are amphoteric oxides? Amphoteric oxides are those oxides which have both the property of to being like an acid or to be like a base also so this is what i'm going to talk about so for that we have a certain example and the example that is i'm going to talk about is al2o3 that is aluminium oxide so whenever al2o3 suppose if it is treated with a acid like suppose six moles of hcl so therefore the product that has been formed is basically we could write it here as two moles of alcl3 along with that of three moles of h2 so therefore this is the product that has been formed while this alcl3 is nothing but it is a salt and this is water so if this is a salt and this is the water that has been formed but this kind of reaction is known as neutralization reaction and this occurs whenever an acid is treated with a base so we understand that is hcl is a strong acid so obviously in this case al2o3 is acting like a base then only it will give us alcl3 so therefore this al2o3 is known as a basic oxide also in this case but it has also been found that is Al2O3 can also react with base and that's the reason it can act like an acid. So for that we have an example and let me talk about that example that is suppose if I talk about that is Al2O3 and suppose if I am reacting with 6 moles of NaOH along with that of 3 moles of H2. So that's for the product that has been formed is basically a complex and the complex is nothing but Na3 Al. OH 6 and this is 2 melons. I will write it here too. So, therefore, the name of this complex it would be nothing but sodium hexahydroxyl aluminate 3. So, therefore, this proves us that this is a complex that is been formed whenever this oxide is treated with a base. So, that means it is an acid base also, as well as this is a basic base also, making this to have a characteristic of both acidic oxide as well as basic oxide that's the reason Al2O3 is known as amphoteric oxide and now let me talk about the another example related to amphoteric oxide so for that we have suppose if you talk about ZNO zinc oxide and suppose if zinc oxide is treated with that is two moles of HCl so therefore the product that is been formed we could write it here as ZNCl2 along with that of H2 so in this case a salt and water is been produced so this is only applicable whenever an acid is treated with a base so in this case hcl is an acid so this must be a base so therefore this is a basic oxide and that's the reason that it can act like an acidic oxide also as well as it can act like a basic oxide also so for that let me introduce a reaction which will prove that it is basic oxide also for example if we talk about zno and if we reacted with two moles of NaOH. So therefore the product that is what we could get is we could get that is Na2ZnO2 along with that of H2O. So this is the product that is what we could get and this proves us that this is acidic in nature as well as it is basic in nature also. So making this oxides to be known as amphoteric oxides. And now let me talk about the last one that is neutral oxides. So neutral oxides are neither acidic in nature or they are not basic in nature. So that's the reason that they are called as neutral oxide. For example, carbon monoxide, I suppose that is if we are talking about that is nitric oxide or we also talk about that is nitrous oxide that is N2O. So these three oxides are basically known as neutral oxides. So therefore this all were the example related to the classification of oxides and that's it. So thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you have understood this video very clearly and I hope I will see you next time. Till then don't forget to subscribe to channel. Thank you so much.